Good afternoon, and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Tuesday in the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is number 617, Come Down, O Love Divine. Number 617. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the country to our heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call the sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Among men, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural man does not accept what pertains to the spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness and he cannot understand it because it is judged spiritually. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge everything but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord.
is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is faithful. and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing any harm to him. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Uh, good afternoon, my dear sisters and brothers. Uh, before I begin my uh, sermon, I would sincerely would like to acknowledge my deep sense of gratitude and thanks to this parish community here in Brooklyn, St. James Cathedral Basilica. Yes, since last two months I have been serving here and then I have experienced the love, the warmth, and the care of every one of you. I would like to take the names of a few, especially Father Brian Patterson, director of our parish here, who allowed me to come in to this parish, and all our collaborators, Deacon Ron, Rosa, Isabel, Anthony, Nate, Camille, and all of you, all the members of this parish have, have been so gracious towards me during this last two months. I really enjoyed being here. I was really feeling at home. Yes, St. James has become my second home. And therefore, this is my last uh, mass perhaps this year. And if God willing, we will meet again next year, the next summer. So today as I celebrate this mass, I celebrate this with a very special intention for the parish members of St. James, for all of you. I do pray to the Lord that he may continue to lead you on his path, continue to bless you abundantly so that we may all join him one day and then sing his praises as one family. Yes, my dear friends, this is my prayer for you and this is my, uh, I mean, uh, sentiments of gratitude that I am acknowledging in front of everyone, both the people who are attending the Mass here personally and also the people who are watching this Mass in a virtual mode. Yes, you have been with me since last two months and then I have really experienced the warmth and love of all of you. Let us all together thank the Lord for this wonderful time that we had together here in St. James. Today's first reading, my dear friends, is a beautiful discourse by St. Paul, where he writes this to the church in Corinth, the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, where he gives a beautiful discourse on the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. He says, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. And he says, we have been given the Spirit not of the world, but of the Lord, the Spirit that comes from God, because it allows us to understand. It allows us to understand the beautiful gifts that God has given to us so freely. Yes, the gifts that God gives us freely is to be understood, not by the Spirit of the world, but rather the Spirit that comes down upon us from above. That is what St. Paul says. We have been given the Spirit from above so that we may understand the gifts that God so freely gives to us. Now, my dear friend, the, the question is, what are these gifts? Oh, yes, the gift is the very precious life that we all receive from His bounty in the first place. The most precious gift that we receive from God is the gift of life. And then it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can really understand and value this gift that we have received from God, right? A believer, that's why I always believe and I always say, a believer can never do anything that would be detrimental to this life that has been given to us. He, will not, he or she would not harm this life by drugs, he or she would not harm this life by alcohol. He will not do anything that would bring any sort of harm to this most precious gift that God has given. To understand that, to value that, and to respect the life, we need the spirit from heaven, the spirit that's come from God. The next, spirit, the next gift that we have received is the gift of faith. See, the gift of faith. There are so many people out there, but not all of them are having this gift of faith. It is because of this gift that we come here to worship him who has given us this gift. Okay, so the Holy Spirit 
allows us or enables us to really value this gift of faith and enables us to lead a life that is befitting to this gift, the gift of faith. And on top of that, the Spirit enables us to understand the value of the grace that we receive through the baptism, through different sacraments, and most importantly, the grace that we richly receive from God by attending the Holy Eucharist. Yes, my dear friends, it is the Spirit that allows us to really understand what we are and what God has done for us. If not for the gift of God, we would not understand who God is. We would not value what God has given to us. It is the Spirit that enables us to really understand and acknowledge. Acknowledge with gratitude the gifts that God has given to us. That's why uh, towards the end of today's first reading, St. Paul says that the man of the world, the natural man, would not understand it and he would not really value this gift, the Spirit, for him this would be simply foolishness. But then for us, who have been given this gift of the Spirit from above, it is God's compassion and mercy. Yes, my dear friends, this is what the Spirit is doing in our lives. And the same Spirit enables us to acknowledge Christ as the Lord and Master of our lives. That is what we see in the Gospel passage today. Jesus was preaching and teaching the people with authority. Not an authority that he got from outside, but an authority that was given to him by the Heavenly Father. And with, with this authority and power, he was teaching the people, he was preaching, and he was healing everyone of their sicknesses. And therefore, people were so amazed. They were so surprised to see the kind of authority with which Jesus lived and moved among them. Yes, my dear friends, this very same spirit would enable us to admit and acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord and Master of our life, who has the ultimate power and authority over us. A man who is led by the spirit would subject himself or herself to the authority of Jesus. And if not, the authority of this world the evil authority of this world would guide him or her. Let that not happen in our case, but rather let us be led by the Spirit and let us subject ourselves to the reign of Jesus, to the authority of Jesus, so that he would certainly take us to the heavenly abode, to which we all are being called by the heavenly Father. And that is where we really belong. That is where we really should end up in our life. Yes, my dear friends, let us pray for that uh, spirit so that the spirit of the Lord would really guide us on the right path. Let us pray. trusting in the mercy and compassion of the Heavenly Father. Let us bring before him our prayers and petitions. For the church leaders, may the example of Jesus inspire them in humble, loving service to God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may God empower them in working to uphold the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For the elderly who are homebound or unvisited, may the Lord fill them with his presence and comfort them with friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord conform us ever more closely to his side and help us grow in virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Joseph of Callahan, for whom this Mass is offered, may they soon rest in the eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. In the stillness of our heart, let us pray for all our personal intentions and petitions. 
let us pray to the Lord. God of compassion, you love all of us as your children. We present these prayers to you in faith that you will answer them. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering be, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrated in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly contempt, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessings of him worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. 
Jesus took the bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Francisco, our Pope, Brennan, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not now sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. The communion hymn is number 728. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Number 728. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of the Mass is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. The closing hymn is number 630, Christ is the King, number 630.